This is Shan. I normally blog over at Rebel Angel, but I've just... <laughs> There's a cat rubbing against my tripod. Come here! Come on! Come on! Say hi, Belle! This is Belle. She wants to say hi. Go on. Go away from my tripod. Hi everyone! I'm Shan. I normally blog at Rebel Angel about fashion, lifestyle, a bit of sewing, a bit of travel, a bit of everything basically. I've just got a new camera. It's a Canon, Canon EOS M10 and apparently it's really good at video so I decided I'd give it a go. I do a lot of sewing and I've recently made this bra. This is the Harriet bra by Cloth Habit. So I made this one, this feature on my blog, I'll stick a link below, I guess I have to do that pointy thing, I'll stick a link below. Um, and I've absolutely loved wearing it, it fits me so perfectly, I just can't believe that I managed to make a bra that in my size actually fits. So I made another one, this one hasn't featured on the blog yet, this is a more ballet inspired one, it uses polka dot mesh with a pink stretch satin and then grey power net and obviously pink findings don't i haven't used any bows so far on them i don't think they go the bow but anyway so i bought another couple of kits and i thought now would be the right time to give a go give it a go with some videoing thrown into the mix so let's see how it goes so i thought it might be useful first to show you how i measured for the harriet bra to know how it might fit you best so you would normally do this without a top on, but this is just a thin knit, so it shouldn't make a difference. And I've just got an unpadded, well-fitting bra underneath. So you first measure your underbust. And mine comes to, I measure it quite snugly because I like quite a snug fit because I'm fairly larger busted. So as you can see, mine's about 27 and a half inches. And then measure over bust. This one doesn't want to be quite as snug. So just enough that the tape measure stays in place. And that I get coming to 37 inches. So you take your 27 inch underbust, round it up to, I'm gonna squat here because I've got the camera at an awkward level, round it up to 28, that's your underbust measurement. Add on 10 inches, which is A, B, C, D, double D, E, F, double F, G, double G. So that was the 27 up to the 37 is 10 making 28 double G and that's what I go for on the Harriet size chart. So I've actually already cut out the pieces for the Harriet bra. Um, I did this about a week ago so instead of showing you cutting them out I thought I'd show you all the different components that go into making a bra because I don't think people realise just how many separate pieces there are that go into it. So these are all the pattern pieces. I've I pin these to the fabric. I know some people recommend not pinning them to the fabric, especially if you're using delicate or stretch materials like these are, but I choose to do so because I'm lazy. I don't like tracing around things because they move and get in the way, so I don't do that. So the Harriet bra is a three-piece cup. You can use stretch lace for the top cup or you can just use the fabric you're already using and it folds under with a piece of elastic. I'm choosing to use the lace one for this because I think it looks prettier, I just like it better. So these fabrics came from a kit by McQuaidig, possibly? That I don't know if that's how you say it. It's a brand on Etsy, I'll leave a link below. Um, the fabric, the floral fabric is, it's got a slight amount of stretch in it not a huge amount but that's what the Harriet bra calls for and I decided to make the band out of this as well rather than the power net it recommends power net but I think it should hopefully work with this the first time I'm trying it with using the actual fabric so we'll see so the different pieces that go into making a bra um, I've just shown you the two band pieces here so these are the part that go around the back of the bra then you've got the outer cradle these two parts which make up the side of the cup. You've got the bridge and this is a non-stretch lining used on the bridge because that part you don't want to move. Then you've got the three-piece cup, the outer lower cup which actually this attaches to the strap there, it works sort of like a cradle that top piece. 
the inner cup and the upper top cup piece and then the same on the other side obviously in some bras you'll find that these are lined but this one isn't lined then you've got the various different components that go into making it so you've got your underwire channeling this is plush on one side and not plush on the other side the plush side goes against the body it makes it more comfortable to wear you've got the band elastic so this goes along the bottom here with the pico edge down facing outward so you'll be able to see it you've got the underarm elastic and this is also sometimes used for the top of the upper cup obviously not in this pattern it wouldn't be but you can do then you've also got some clear elastic which is used to stabilize the edge of the top of the lace cup but i generally don't tend to use it because again i'm lazy but i don't find that it needs it that's hard to roll up then you've got the strap elastic which all of this came with the kit this one came with these threaded onto it which is quite nice you've got your sliders and your rings so you're not going to lose them then of course you've got your underwires these didn't come with the mcquay dig kit these i bought from another person on etsy called emerald erin who also runs a blog which is really awesome you should go check it out um these are the bliss underwires and i love them because they're u-shaped and narrow so they fit me really well they're really good for this pattern and also really good if you've got a shape that's more narrow which many larger busted but smaller under busted ladies like me have then you get your hook and eye which comes attached like that and this one is too wide as opposed to the three that my size actually calls for in this pattern so when the time gets to it i'll have to make the band piece narrower towards that and of course you've got your matching thread i'm going for navy for this one uh on your got it on your bobbin as well there then the tools of the trade i'll just move that a little bit over here the things that you need i use these teeny tiny little embroidery scissors that are super cute my grandma got me these and i love them they look like a little bird and also they squeak like a bird they're not doing it now i don't think they're supposed to but they do um my fabric scissors at the moment i'm using ikea ones a rotary wheel chalk pencil lots of pins tape measure for measuring your elastic strap elastic especially and this is spray adhesive i use this for attaching the lining to the bridge piece you're supposed to base it on but like the theme is going i'm lazy so i don't and those are all the components you need to make your bra so let's get started on the sewing the first thing to do with the Harriet pattern is to make your strap. So you're measuring out your strap elastic to 20 inches. So that's around there, which is bang on halfway actually for my strap elastic that I've been provided with. So quick snip. So you take the wrong side of your elastic facing you and then grab your slider and it goes in that way I'm terrible at diagrams and following them and up through the other side so you've got around an, an inch i guess there through there and you fold it back over on itself and you take that over to your sewing machine and you just sew with a straight stitch and cross it. Add it back and forth a couple of times. You can use a narrow zigzag to do this, but I prefer a straight stitch. So you trim off your threads. Then you grab the other end of your strap, get oops i've lost that one get your ring slide it on to about there still got the wrong side of elastic facing you then you feed the other end of your elastic through the slider and then back the other way again and you end up 
with a bra strap. And you've got that little bit of stitching is hidden on the inside. You can trim that a bit shorter if you like there because I've left a bit of seam allowance. But you've got your strap, working strap. And then you just repeat on the other one. So confession time, I actually do a lot of my sewing on the floor. All my cutting out, everything happens on the floor because I don't have a table. So that means that you get little ones like these in your, on your cutting mat and on your fabric all the time. So I'm trying to show you here. Move out of the way because you're going to get sprayed with glue. Go on. When it focuses back on me. Um, I use this spray adhesive to baste my bridge and lining together. Again, like I said before, I'm lazy. So I actually had to go back to the sewing machine here because I messed up a little bit and forgot to sew these together first. So we've sewn those together at the bridge. You then lay them out. So you've got wrong side facing you and you trim off any excess here. This is what I use my little embroidery scissors for as well. I love these. And then using your spray adhesive, holding it about 20 to 30 centimeters above your bridge piece. You mist it with a fine layer of spray and that's got everywhere because it always does. And try and line these up as best you can. It never quite lines up perfectly for me because that's just me. But some of this is going to end up being underneath the seam allowance anyway, underneath your elastic. So, you can hear a cat in the background there. So you have it lined up as best you can and there you go, you've got your stabilised bridge piece which is kind of stuck to the mat but it'll all be okay, there we go. Now most people probably will have done a better job at basting the bridge piece together than me but anyway we're back at the sewing machine and now we're going to, to attach the bridge piece to the two cradle pieces here that go on either side. So right sides together, you line up these edges, quarter of an inch seam allowance again and I, like I said before, I don't use pins for this part because it's just too small and too fiddly. If you've got a bit of experience with sewing, it shouldn't be too hard to do it without pins anyway. So once you've got your first cradle piece attached, like so, you flip it over so that you've got the wrong sides facing you and we are going to press the seam allowances open. I don't press them with an iron because often the fabrics that you're using in bra making don't go well with being pressed by an iron. So I generally just tend to hold them open and you want to edge stitch that down so you're turn it back to the right side and it should be just less than a quarter of an inch that you're sewing that back down again just so you get a nice neat seam there so you can see that you want to edge stitch down the side of the seam stitching that edge out My sewing machine keeps trying to eat my fabric today. Sometimes this just happens. And you just have to deal with it. <laughs> 
So that leaves you with it nicely stitched down on either side of the seam. One of the things with making a bra is that it's really repetitive because you've got two sides that are exactly symmetrical. So I decided I wouldn't bother filming doing everything. So I've attached both sides now. So we've got the whole cradle here and now we're going to do the band pieces. So these attach on like this. Oh, got a little symmetrical bit. I've got a little matching bit there. So these attach onto either side of the cradle. And again, it's flipping it right sides together, lining the edges up and then sewing them together. So I'll zoom back in on my needle for this. For this one, I actually am going to pin the band pieces to the cradle and yes I've got a pin in my teeth and I shouldn't do I know <laughs> be really gentle with this you want to use as sharp as pins you can so that you're not catching pulling anything like that try not to stretch the pieces as you attach them together I'm just pinning that in two places just to keep it together because it's a bigger piece And again, quarter of an inch seam allowance, and off you go. So now that we've sewn the band piece to the bridge, if you, that's the two wrong sides together there. So if you open it up, you can see that that's how we've got our two right sides attaching at the band. And again, we're going to do the same, opening out the seam allowance and pressing that to either side, then sewing it, edge stitching it down the side of the seam on either side. So I'll let you imagine that happening because it's not that exciting. Okay, so we've now got the bridge sewn to the cradle, sewn to the band, all with the seams stitched, pressed down, out to either side and stitched down. So this is how it looks from the inside. And so we can now set that to one side and get started on the cups. So I've got in front of me for the, if you're looking at the bra, the left cup. So I find it easiest if you lay out your pattern pieces on top of them when you bring them over to your sewing machine just to make sure. You should have notches cut into these here but they're going to be really difficult to see on camera but it helps to lay them out like this to make sure you get them the right way up. So it can be really confusing actually. So we figured out which way they are. You take your inner cut piece right side up, lay right sides together on top of your outer cut piece, line up the notches and at this point you might find it helpful to pin it in place. I do here because it can slip inside a bit, the material's quite delicate so make sure you've got some nice sharp pins that won't stretch or damage the fabric. Pin them in place and you're off again sewing with a quarter of an inch seam allowance and then doing the same again, pressing out the side. So here we go. So again, all these seams, all the cup seams, all the band and bridge seams at this point are all done with a straight stitch and a quarter of an inch seam allowance. For this one, again, you are not pressing your seam allowances out like we did with the last one. So you're not going to do it like that. Instead, you keep them together and push them towards the outer cup. So the bit that's got the little sticky out lip on push your seams towards that both together and then stitch 
down, edge stitch just away from the seam again. It gets a little more tricky stitching down these seams because you've now got a curved seam in this cup so that because that's going to create an outward curve it needs you need to be really careful that you're not bunching the fabric up underneath there it can be quite difficult so now you've got that stitched down and I'm just going to trim that extra bit away and then I'll do it on the other side as well so now we've got the lower cut pieces sewn together with the seam pressed outwards towards the outer cup. You grab your upper cut piece, ugh, which I'm holding really, really tightly in place here because I've got, I don't know if you can see a tiny blue dot there that's lined up with a tiny blue dot on my lace. And these want to get stitched together along this curved edge seam there so it's going to make a really nice curved seam which gives loads of space so that's the part I'm going to do now and I don't pin this one because it's a curved seam and I find it a lot easier to work with curved seams by pushing it as I go against that edge so you start stitching right on where your dot is which is in your pattern and you line up your edges quarter inch seam allowance again as always here and be careful not to stretch as you go along using your straight stitch again and we're off so i'm feeding my lace up against this curved edge as i go So you've now got your two lower cut pieces attached to your upper cut piece there. And when we turn that right sides out, it should look like this. And now what we're going to do is press this seam down towards the lower cut because you want it showing through the lace here. And then that's your first cut piece finished. So one thing to note when you're sewing your seam allowance down on, or your seam, this part here, down underneath the lower cup is because you've got this extra little bit that makes a sort of cradle, you need to fold that part under two and start sewing that bit there so that it joins onto there properly. So now that we've got something that looks like a real bra, it's got the cups in, you've got all the band and the bridge all ready, we're now going to apply the channeling for the underwire. So basically, you get your channeling and you flip this so that you've got just your cup like this with the seam allowance uh, between the cup and the bridge facing towards you like that you grab your channeling with the plush side facing to out towards you like this because this is the bit that's going to be touching the body in the actual finished piece so you line that up along with the seam that you've just sewn on here and you want to leave about mm, an inch or so of extra space at the top there so that you've got a bit to play with and you're going to stitch it really, really closely along that edge there. So lining up with that seam line and along that seam allowance there. So I'll do that bit now. 
So we've now got both the under channel underwire channeling sewn in on both of the cups and one thing that I forgot to mention is that you always need to make sure when you're sewing the Harriet bra at least anyway to stop sewing around an inch from the underarm on this point because the underarm elastic is going to go there. So we're now on to the underarm elastic. So we're using this narrow elastic for this plush on one side it's got the pico edging and so you'll start sewing it from the top of the cup with the plush side facing towards you, the pico edge also facing towards you and I'm of course on the wrong side of the cup. <laughs> So you should be sewing this to the right side of the cup. You have right sides together. So that's the right side of the elastic. The plush side is facing towards me as I sew. Right side of the cup. You start sewing it there. It goes all the way. And this is why you've left a gap there because you're going to flip this. Once it's sewn in place, you flip it under and the pico edging will show out the top there. And then we'll eventually put in the underwire and that'll fix in place there. Um, this is sewn into place with a narrow zigzag stitch. So I normally use about 2.5 and 1.8 on mine. And so I'll do that bit now. So now that we've got the two pieces of underarm elastic sewn into place, but only the first pass of elastics, this means you've only sewn it once so far before flipping it under we're going to sew the hem elastics. This one's a bit wider, it's the same colour, same style, it's got the pico edge, the plush side, and this one again we're applying to the right side of the fabric with the plush side facing you and the pico edge away from the edge. And again sewing it with a narrow zigzag to start with and then after that I'm going to flip it underneath for the second pass of elastic. Then we're going to do it on a three step stitch I think it's called yeah three step zigzag um and that will hold it in place and also don't forget when you're sewing elastics on bras to stretch it ever so slightly as you go so that you'll get the good fit from it we've now got the hem elastic in place with the three step zigzag so look how pretty it looks yay and I've also swapped back to a straight stitch on the machine and closed the channeling at the top here. And now I'm going to stitch that down. So mine's actually going to overlap at the top here because in the larger sizes it tends to do that. So I'm going to stitch that down like this and we'll be ready to put the underwires in then. Right, so I've now stitched down the underwire channeling. So you can see that goes all the way along the edge of the cup into the on the gore here it joins together at the top like that where it overlapped which i think is super pretty and back to the other side and here's what it looks like from the inside you can't really see and i've also stitched down the second pass of the underarm elastic so it looks like that and don't forget to leave that little bit of edge there free so don't catch that underneath because now we're going to pop the underwire in slide it all the way down and then we'll stitch off the edge there and trim that bit off the top. So it really does actually look like a bra now we've got the underwires in and I've closed off the channeling at the ends here with just a straight stitch and trimmed it off, trimmed off the underwire at the top of the gore as well. So now I've got to narrow down the end of the band so that it fits the hooks and eyes better because my hook and eyes are a different size. So the hooks go onto this side of it, so when you're wearing it, it's the left hand side, did a little elbow to check, and the eyes go onto this side facing that way down. So we're going to measure quickly how that will fit, and you mark it on, because we're about to put the straps on, you see some marking there where that will go. And then the straps are going to get attached onto here and I'm going to trim that down to fit so that the straps will fit in to there nicely. We've now got straps that are attached. So the Harriet bra actually attaches with the straps with the rings at the front rather than the back like most bras do. So the straps have a really simple clean line down the back and the ring and slider at the front, which actually a lot of people prefer because it makes it easier to adjust them on your body which is quite nice. 
So now onto the final bit that I actually really hate doing. If I didn't have to do this, that would be really nice, but it's attaching the hook and eyes. I really don't like this because I always hit, manage to hit the needle on some bit of the hook or the eye at some point. There is a little trick though, which is using your zipper foot does tend to help. So pop that on. Oh, I can't do it. Pop that on. And also if you move your needle across a little bit, so if you put it into its furthest position, um, it does make it a bit easier. It does help to miss the hooks and the eyes a little bit, but there you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm.